Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, another major San Antonio school district makes the decision to impose a temporary mask mandate. And federal officials warn against an increasing amount of younger COVID-19 patients at hospitals nationwide. Outside with live cam hovering right around 80 degrees. Looks like there's a ton of moisture in the air right now as far as the humidity goes. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is August 20th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad we made it to Friday, but yeah, I agree. I think it's a little humid out there. Let's go to Mike, see how the weekend is shaping up. I know we have to get through Friday first, but we've already got that ball rolling, Mike. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Yes. Two it's days in a row. Hotter right? weekends in a while. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the hottest weekend hottest. so far this year. Really? Yeah, because we've had the two hottest days so far this year, officially out at the airport. 98 again yesterday, two days in a row. And I think we're just going to, I really don't see any reason why we're, we're not going to be up in the upper 90s again today. And even though there's a lot of humidity in the air, the ground continues to dry out. And that's what's been helping to keep temperatures down because of all the rain that we've had throughout the summer. And you get that, that soil moisture and that would help to keep things down. But now that the ground is continuing to dry out, it's much easier to heat up. And so, yeah, that's why we're going to be scorching this weekend. 80 right now, 79 since 81 in Castroville. And yeah, I mean, look at these numbers, ton of humidity. Once again, mid 70s, low to mid 70s, and even a couple of upper 70s for dew point temperatures, which means it's humid. Simple explanation to that one. 85 is what it feels like here in town. 88 is the uh, heat index right now in Castroville. And we do have a, a moderate amount of, excuse me, high amount of mold yesterday. That was from some of the storms we had the previous night. Uh, 98 for a high temperature. I'm going for it again today with a lot of sunshine out there. And uh, yeah, this is what you can expect over the weekend. Heat index is going to be well up into the low hundreds and hopefully a little bit of relief by the middle of next week. So in other words, long stretch of hot temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. Due to this morning, a big decision regarding mass mandates at San Antonio's Northeast ISD. The district held an emergency school board meeting last night to discuss the issue. After hours of discussion in a Facebook post, NEISD said, quote, in the interest of student health and safety, the NEISD Board of Trustees has voted to implement a temporary face mask mandate for all students, staff, and visitors. The mandate goes into effect Monday, August 23rd, and applies to all NEISD campuses, school buses, and facilities while indoors, end quote. During the meeting, the district's assistant director of health services said the Delta variant is likely to spread to five to nine, uh, so five others when one person is infected. She added that elementary classrooms are seeing the majority of the cases. The Army police are investigating a deadly crash just southwest of Bear County. Officers first responded to the single rollover crash on I-35 near Benton City Road. It happened around 6 last night. Bear County deputies also dispatched to the area. The sheriff's office says one person was killed. An investigation is now underway into what caused that deadly rollover. Well, we already hinted at it. Now to the spike in younger COVID-19 patients. The number of hospitalized children and people under 50 have now reached their highest level yet. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, COVID hospitalizations across the country hit nearly 93,000, the highest number of patients since January. The crisis deepening in the South, where states have among the lowest vaccination rates. In Alabama, ICUs are 100% full. We're experiencing wait times in the emergency room like we've never seen. They are waiting for hours and sometimes more than 24 hours in the emergency department so that they can move upstairs to get a bed. In Mississippi, hospitalizations have surpassed last winter's peak. The governor has requested an additional 150 ventilators from the nation's stockpile. And now 20,000 students across the state are in quarantine after just the first week of school. The state's top doctor calling this the worst part of the pandemic. We are clearly at the worst part of the pandemic that we've seen throughout and it's continuing to worsen. In the meantime, more Americans are getting vaccinated. The U.S. reporting more than 1 million vaccine doses administered in just the past 24 hours, and stricter mandates are rolling out. In Washington state, the governor issuing an order that requires most state employees, health care workers, school employees, and child care providers to get fully vaccinated or face losing their jobs. And unlike other mandates, Washington states will not allow a weekly testing alternative. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. The Texas Supreme Court has declined to block restraining orders against Governor Greg Abbott's mass mandate ban. The justices demanded Attorney General Ken Paxton's appeal to the Third Court of Appeals in Austin for a hearing. 
The court did not issue an opinion for its decision yesterday. The move comes the same day as the Texas Education Agency dropped for now enforcement in the state's public school systems of Abbott's mask mandate ban. In a public health guidance letter, the TEA said enforcement was being dropped because of the ongoing court challenges to the ban. Today, President Biden will update the nation again on the situation in Afghanistan. Overnight, nearly 3,000 people were evacuated from Ahmed Karzai International Airport on 16 C-17 flights. With an end of the month deadline looming, tens of thousands are still waiting to be airlifted from that country. There are also new questions this morning about communication in the weeks before the Taliban takeover. Sources tell ABC News that U.S. diplomats in Kabul sent a classified memo to State Department leadership in mid-July. That memo warned that the Afghan government would, could collapse as the Taliban swept across the country. For the first time on record, rain has fallen at the summit of Greenland. Temperatures at Greenland's highest point have risen above freezing for the first time this decade. That fueled an extreme rain event that dumped 7 billion tons of water on the ice sheet. It's usually only see snows. Uh, according to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, it was the heaviest rainfall since record keeping began back in 1950. National Science Foundation Summit Station is located at the top of the Greenland Ice Sheet. The station has been staffed year-round since 1989. And time now is 436 and it's about 79 degrees out there. Coming up on GMSA, uh, how the Dallas Cowboys plan to have the number one offense in the NFL this year. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. There's a nice shot out there. A couple of people traveling early Friday morning. It's 79 degrees. It's going to humid start to your day. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore wants the number one offense in the league this year. But guys like Dak and Amari coming along slowly. Uh, with them unlikely to see preseason game action. Some wonder if his goal is a little too lofty. Kellen doesn't sound too worried. We have a plan in place. We feel very comfortable with it. And uh, obviously, we're, again, we're fortunate. These guys have played for a number of years together. And so we're, we're in a very beneficial situation with that. It's that time of year. Big game coverage previews coming off a sub 500 seasons. The Holmes Huskies of San Antonio looking to make a move, but that's not going to be easy in District 29-6A. Holmes went 1-8 and eight overall last season, 1-7 and seven in district. They have nine starters returning, four on offense, five on defense. And they have a lot of experience as a number of players have been on varsity since their sophomore year. It's very important um, because we came from a one in nine season. Everybody's motivated and we have a lot of seniors coming, so everybody's excited for this season. Last year was tough. You know, COVID going on, team had to push through. The season didn't go the way we wanted to, but we're coming back. Holmes will open the season against Lee Saturday, August 28th, 7 p.m. at Coma Lander Stadium. College ball. We're 15 days away from UTSA season opener at Illinois, September 4th. Led by head coach Jeff Trailer, the Roadrunners have one of the most experienced rosters in college football. He says this is a bowl caliber team with multiple leaders who bring it every single day. Being able to have multiple leaders is, you know, definitely a great thing. And I feel like, you know, guys like our super seniors and all of our older guys, um, you know, on both sides of the ball have been doing a great job of that. And, you know, and I feel like, you know, it would definitely take us far this season. On a side note, UTSA Athletic Director Dr. Lisa Campos picked up a four-year contract extension that runs through November of 2026. Now to Missions Baseball. Didn't start off so well last night against Corpus Christi. During the first inning, the Missions allowed the Hooks to score four runs, but the Missions offense came through in the end, take a late lead late in the ninth. San Antonio comes back to win. Final score, 8-5. to five. Series continues tonight down in Corpus Christi. Yeah, congrats, Missions. Not too bad. Uh, time now, 441 and about 79 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, why San Antonio Municipal Court is targeting young, unlicensed drivers for a specialized docket. Also next, a consumer alert as several mail, mail carriers across the country are announcing shipping price increases in the coming months. And welcome back. It's about 444. Several mail carriers have announced shipping price increases that will affect the upcoming holiday shopping season. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a consumer alert 
what you need to know about shipping surcharges. It may not be too early to start planning your holiday shopping. Many mail carriers across the country announcing shipping price increases heading your way in the coming months. FedEx, UPS, and the United States Postal Service all announcing temporary peak surcharges and fees coming later in the fall. The real challenge comes from how the products are getting to the stores. So while the CEO of Target could say they have $2 billion worth of holiday inventory coming to the stores, no one's addressing how that product is getting to the stores. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert advice on how to get the gifts you want sent where you want them without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the San Antonio Municipal Court has created a new specialized court docket that's targeting young, unlicensed drivers. Eric Hernandez stopped by the SA Road Ready Court to explain how it works. From July 2020 to July 2021, roughly 17,400 tickets were given to people for driving with an invalid driver's license or no license at all. Of those ticketed drivers, about 29% were between the ages of 17 to 24. It's a significant amount of individuals that are driving without a driver's license in that age group. Presiding Judge Carla Obledo has helped put together SA Road Ready Court for Young Drivers and it officially launched on July 15th. The ultimate goal of this court is to not only provide resources, but also to reduce the amount of unlicensed drivers on San Antonio roadways. What we've done with this SA Road Ready Court is created a more structured program. It is a deferred disposition, which is, is similar to a probation, and it contains timelines that individuals need to complete certain requirements. The docket for this court is heard every Thursday. Ticketed individuals meet with the judge, and then a timeline is laid out that includes driver's education courses. It usually takes about six months to complete. Ultimately, we would like to expand this program, but since there's such a significant number of drivers in this age group that are involved in motor vehicle accidents, that's why we really wanted to target this group first. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 447, if you're just now joining us, good morning. It is Friday, and we imagine in this weekend's going to be a sizzler. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hot. Well, at least yesterday evening, I know during the afternoon it was, you know, pretty hot, but in the evening it was actually kind of nice. Yeah, once the sun starts to go mm -hmm. down and, you know, it, it's you get out of that just intense broil, yes. I think it's, it, it is a little easier to take. But isn't it ironic, though, just when we peaked as far as the normal high temperatures, the, the average and sort of going down, that the temperatures actually started going up. So, mm -hmm. ah, yes, kind of making up uh, for what we've had as a fairly cool summer. Beautiful view, though, and great looking uh, sunset yesterday. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And this morning we are starting off, I mean, literally deja vu. It's almost identical to what we had yesterday morning and the day before that. Yesterday, although we did not have any uh, showers or anything popping up around here, we had a couple of clouds hanging around. That's just some little bit of clutter that shows up there on the, uh, the radar imagery. And around the country, up to the north, and uh, there's a lot going on. Look at that. That's actually snow up there in the higher elevations of the Rockies. I know that's just kind of a, a really nasty little tease just to talk about that since we're at 98 degrees, but a lot of activity up to the north and for us there's hardly anything going on obviously and some pretty dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well. So once we get rid of these low morning clouds, we're going to have some beautiful sunshine. A lot of uh, moisture loft off to the west of us, but that's just not coming on in here. And we do have a pretty good flow off the, the Gulf of Mexico. You can't rule out completely a few sea breeze showers here along the coastal plain. Maybe today uh, going into tomorrow, well down to the south, yeah, one or two of them. But other than that, really don't have any mention of uh, rain in the forecast going in through the weekend, starting off next week. There is some hope, though, by the middle of next week, we will start to see a bit more moisture trying to move on in here along the coastal plain and perhaps a couple of showers around. Again, this is that broad brush computer model, so there's it, it's wishful thinking at best as of right now, but at least there is that subtle little change that uh, may be coming about. Here's the reason. Oh, first of all, uh, tropics and grace has been weakening as it moved across the uh, Gulf, the uh, 
Yucatan Peninsula, pardon me, it is just on the verge of becoming a hurricane once again, and it is probably going to right as it makes landfall, and that's going to be sometime late, late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Of course, it's not going to have any effect on our weather around here. And going out further into the Atlantic Ocean, there is Henri, which is going to just kind of make a turn up to the north and to the northeast. Then further off to the east, we do have another little area that the Hurricane Center is watching right out here just off the coast of Africa and get all these disturbances. So this is the usual as we approach the peak of the hurricane season, which is the uh, first or uh, second week of September that we keep getting that kind of uh, almost an assembly line coming off Africa and coming across the uh, Atlantic Ocean with those disturbances. 90 partly cloudy skies today at noon. And then once again, we're going to be well up there in the upper 90s. Heat index is going to be into the hundreds. Plenty of blazing sunshine other than a sea breeze shower possible the next couple of days. It is going to be hot. It is going to be summer. And we hold out for the hope of rain middle of next week. Sea breeze showers. Yeah, I hope so. And this is a time of year where the uh, kids are starting to practice outside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And like all the experts say, don't wait till they're thirsty. You just got to keep them, you know, keep filling up with water so they can stay hydrated and do all that with all the, you know, and the band and football and all the exactly. other athletics and, and everything. Just being outside playing too. That's tough. Even walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Mike. Right now it's 451, about 79 degrees. And up next, Hugh Jackman is reliving old memories in a new sci-fi thriller out this week. We're going to have a preview. But first, your lottery numbers this Friday morning. Pick 3199, Fireball 5. Daily 4 numbers, 8507, Fireball 3. Cash 5, we have 135716. And your Texas 2-step, 117334, bonus ball 12. Hey, look at Hugh Jackman's latest movie, plus a slew of musical artists are taking the stage this weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You're going on a journey, a journey through memory. Hugh Jackman is reliving old memories and reminiscence, a new sci-fi thriller out this weekend. In the film, he plays a guy who runs a service that allows people to experience past events. Jackman says if he could, he'd go back to... The falling in love days with my wife, I mean... You know, they're 26 years ago now, so I'd love to revisit that. My kids being born, my first kiss. I, I wouldn't mind just some things like that. Reminiscence out today in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. Being in love makes me sick. Also out today, the wild Adam Driver, Marion Cotillard musical, Annette, streaming on Amazon Prime Video. I like when you act like you're my boss. I am your boss. And The Chair on Netflix is the first post Game of Thrones series from producers David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. Some of the biggest music acts in the world taking the stage this weekend. Bruce Springsteen, Jennifer Hudson, and more playing We Love NYC, the homecoming concert. Awesome. Rob Thomas and Carlos Santana will rock out together. Santana telling us he can't wait. I feel really happy, really motivated, and I truly tell you that I'm very enthusiastic about re-entering this world again after two, almost two years, uh, and especially in the center of the world, which is, Man which is New York. The concert in Central Park was meant to celebrate a rebirth of the Big Apple as the pandemic slowed. It was planned before the rise of the Delta variant. And happy birthday, Demi Lovato, the singer and actor turning 29 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Biden gets ready to update the nation again today on the situation in Afghanistan and the evacuation of American citizens and their families. Plus, Facebook making meetings a little more fun with a new virtual reality system for workplaces. Details coming up in Morning Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Not too bad for Friday. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the White House facing increasing criticism for the situation in Afghanistan. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. Coming up, we'll hear from one American family still stuck in Kabul. 
And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 79 degrees. I'm going to enjoy that humid 79 because it's going to get hotter. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, August 20th. Happy Friday. Yay, we made it to the end of the week. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, but just prepare for the heat. Yeah, you know that summer weather when you go outside and it feels like somebody's opened up an oven door. You can almost smell the air baking. We're getting closer to that reality, aren't we, Mike? Uh, closer or in that reality because <laughs> the past couple of days we've hit 98 for high temperatures, which it's as we were saying last half hour is kind of ironic because now we're sort of on the, the downward slide historically as far as uh, the average high temperature, 96. And that's, uh, well, the only the third and fourth times in the past two months that the high temperature has been above the its respective average high. Right now we're at 80, 75 is the dew point, which means, yeah, it's a bunch of humidity going for 98 again today. As the ground continues to dry out as well, that makes it easier for uh, temperatures to get up there. The aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot and the allergens molds on the high side and just a little bit of pigweed is showing up. So with all this heat and with all this humidity, of course, it feels hotter than what the thermometer reads and it feels like 85 degrees at the airport. Stinson 86 and 85 up the road at Canyon Lake and we once again will have of course heat index readings that are going to be well up into the low hundreds around the area. No heat advisories are posted though but obviously just really take it easy as much shade and water as you can get 78 this morning most of the cloudy skies and then a high temperature once again up to 98 with mostly sunny skies still that uh, breeze out of the southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour but you know it's funny yesterday walking outside in that breeze it's like does that really help to cool you off because it's just hot wind blowing in your face going to be a hot weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos anything big going on sir good morning hey good morning happy Friday Mike uh, right now things are looking fairly smooth here off US 21 at San Pedro you can see just a few folks out on the roadways from this shot at trans guide uh, taking a closer look though let's go ahead and talk about some construction that's gonna be going on this weekend a uh, big construction the demolition of the US 87 bridge out near Bernie now we did talk about this uh, throughout the week but this has been delayed multiple times and recently was due to birds nest in that area. However, it will be taking place this weekend, so something to be on the lookout for. There will be a full closure of those main lanes in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road, and that will again will be taking place from August 20th. That's tomorrow up until Monday, August 23rd. It's overnight, so 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so hopefully that will not impact anybody's drive, but either way, something to be on the lookout for for our friends out in Bernie. Right now here in the Alamo City and some of our outlying communities there, it is looking pretty green here on the screen, so let's go ahead and jump to those inbound times right now. If you can take a look at right now, it's a good time to head out the door if you're traveling in from Bernie on I-10 with 25 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. We're also looking at 25 minutes across the board here to 281 from Bolverde and 35 coming in from New Braunfels. And one last look here at Transguide where things are off to a smooth start, but of course we're watching the roads closely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Right now we want to get to late breaking news just north of downtown. It's a shooting. San Antonio police are searching the area off of Blanco Road north of Fresno for the person who pulled the trigger. One person was found with gunshot wounds at a gas station nearby. Katrina Weber is live with uh, more. Katrina, what can you tell us so far? It's a man who was shot, a man in his 30s, uh, shot in the backside taken to a hospital. In fact, we saw the ambulance leave here just about five to ten minutes ago. The police since have been searching uh, the car that you see there. You can see them going through it right now with a flashlight. They say that that man was in that car. It had stalled out here on Blanco Road near Mariposa, this just north of Fresno. Uh, they, the car had stalled out. That victim and the shooter were both in the car, according to police. They pushed the car to the location that you see right now, and then witnesses tell police that those two men then got into a fight. One of them pulled out a gun and shot the other, then took off running. Uh, the victim was found here again, shot with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Police have been searching ever since for the shooter. In fact, they have their helicopter overhead right now. Uh, they are looking in this area to try to find that person who was just described as another man, as far as we know. Uh, no specific description given at this point. But that is the situation here as they continue to investigate the shooting, which happened a little bit after 4.30 this morning. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a big decision regarding mask mandates at Northeast ISD. The district held an emergency school board meeting last night to discuss the issue. After hours of discussion, NEISD posted on Facebook, quote, in the interest of student health and safety, the NEISD Board of Trustees has voted to implement a temporary face mask mandate for all students, staff, and visitors. The mandate goes into effect Monday, August 23rd, and applies at all NEISD campuses, school buses, and facilities while indoors, end quote. During the meeting, the district's assistant director of health services said the Delta variant is likely to spread to five to nine others when one person is infected. She added that elementary classrooms are seeing the majority of cases. And this morning, there's updated guidance from the Texas Education Agency. The TA is now dropping enforcement of the governor's order that made masks optional due to ongoing legal challenges. Along with allowing mask mandates, the agency says schools must notify all teachers, staff, and families of all students who were in the classroom or extracurricular activities involving any COVID positive student. School districts still must report cases of COVID-19 to health officials. Well, as most districts across San Antonio have their classrooms back in full swing, local universities have also been working to get things rolling for their new academic year. Trinity University is preparing to welcome back students to campus today. Jonathan Cotto has been visiting the community at Trinity University all week and joins us live this morning. Now, Jonathan, we understand the start of the fall semester for Trinity is an exciting one considering we are in the midst of a public health crisis. You're absolutely right, Stephanie. An exciting one indeed, as school officials tell us they are preparing to welcome one of their most impressive classes ever, astonishing in size, academic strength, and diversity. Admissions department representatives tell us they uh, typically aim at enrolling 640 new first-year students. They say despite all the stressors brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, 674 college freshmen have enrolled for this fall. The school's dean of admissions says the class of 2025 is the second largest class in the school's history. We had no idea how this was going to play out when the pandemic first started. And, you know, I, I think all of us are, are very pleasantly surprised about really, I feel that the Trinity community completely came together, the, the faculty, the coaches, the staff, the current students, the alumni to enroll this, this incoming class. The Dean of Admission says they were able to host a whole series of virtual recruiting events last year and were able to have students and families visit the campus, which he says a lot of campuses across the country weren't able to do so. He states that played a huge difference in terms of students making a confident decision to enroll here at Trinity University. Reporting live for GMSA, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. This morning, growing desperation in Kabul as thousands try to navigate Taliban-controlled checkpoints to get to the airport. And there's growing scrutiny of the situation after news that U.S. diplomats at the embassy in Kabul reportedly warned the Secretary of State that the Afghan government was at risk of collapse. ABC's Alex Brashe has the latest from Washington. This morning, the urgency to escape Kabul intensifying. 15,000 Americans and up to 60,000 Afghans who helped the U.S. now desperate to escape. The White House saying the U.S. evacuated 3,000 people yesterday, with many more cleared for departure. Images from outside the airport show a country in chaos. Reports of at least 12 people killed since Sunday. Taliban fighters struggled to keep control using guns and batons against civilians. I actually got whacked with... Um you know, with one of these like, you know, fan belts for not moving fast enough. David Fox is still struggling to make it back stateside with his Afghan wife and three year old son. Right now, they're camped among the crowd at the Kabul airport. For me as a as a father, I always have to risk, in, you know, I have to weigh the risks of these different options. So to me, the, the airport is very dangerous. The Pentagon says more than 5,200 U.S. troops are now there, attempting to process more people faster, and in Washington, more scrutiny of the Biden administration. Sources tell ABC News U.S. diplomats at the embassy in Kabul sent a classified memo in July to top State Department leadership, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken, warning that the Afghan government was at risk of collapse from a Taliban takeover. President Biden, who's remained steadfast in his decision to withdraw, now expected to speak on Afghanistan later today. Senators will get a briefing on Afghanistan this afternoon. Alex Pache, ABC News, Washington.
And time now is 5.09. And it's about 79 degrees out there. Still ahead on the morning show, Facebook launching a virtual reality meeting room to increase workplace interactivity. And what's next now that a quorum has finally reached for the second special session for the Texas legislature? Outside with live cam, waking up on a Friday morning with us right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Glad you are with us. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. 512, welcome back. This morning's sad news. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is mourning the loss of one of their own. Funeral arrangements are now being made for Deputy Floyd Cardenas. The 41-year-old passed away in his sleep, and Sheriff Javier Salazar says there were no health problems that they were aware of and noted that Cardenas was at work just a couple of days ago. He was with the department for 18 years, serving on the SWAT team as well as a trainer for the K-9 unit. Well, the gridlock in the state legislature special session, the second one is now over. Texas House Speaker Dade Phelan saying the House has reached a quorum after some of the Democrats who left the state are finally back. One of the Democrats still holding out is Representative Diego Bernal of San Antonio. He criticized de declaring a quorum when lawmakers claiming to be present were not actually on the House floor. The break in quorum happened nearly six weeks ago when Democratic lawmakers tried to stop a bill that will add restrictions to the voting process. The three Democrats that apparently tipped the scales for a quorum defended their decisions saying they brought attention to voting rights. Time check now just about 514, still about 79 degrees. And still ahead, Twitter is rolling out a series of improvements to its direct message system. Plus, we're checking out some new wireless earbuds designed for people with mild to moderate hearing loss. If you have postmenopausal osteoporosis and a high risk for fracture, now might not be the best time to ask yourself, are my bones strong? Life's full of make or break moments. That's why it's so important to help reduce your risk of fracture with Prolia. Only Prolia is proven to help strengthen and protect bones from fracture with one shot every six months. Do not take Prolia if you have low blood calcium, are pregnant, are allergic to it, or take Exgeva. Serious allergic reactions like low blood pressure, trouble breathing, throat tightness, face, lip, or tongue swelling, rash, itching, or hives have happened. Tell your doctor about dental problems as severe jaw bone problems may happen or new or unusual pain in your hip, groin, or thigh as unusual thigh bone fractures have occurred. Speak to your doctor before stopping, skipping, or delaying Prolia as spine and other bone fractures have occurred. Prolia can cause serious side effects like low blood calcium, serious infections, which could need hospitalization, skin problems, and severe bone joint or muscle pain. Don't wait for a break. Call your doctor now and ask how Prolia can help you. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook's virtual reality meeting room. It's called Horizon Workrooms, and it allows you and colleagues to gather with the help of an Oculus virtual reality headset. It's seen as a way for Facebook to compete with Zoom, which exploded in popularity in the pandemic. For now, it's an invite-only feature, and Facebook isn't saying when it could go wider. Twitter says it's rolling out some improvements to its direct message system that could cut down on those embarrassing, unintentional group chats. Among the changes, users will have the ability to share the same tweet in up to 20 different DM conversations separately. Jobber's latest earbuds are for people with mild to moderate hearing loss and not ready to transition to all-day hearing aids. The Enhanced Plus will be available in the U.S. at the end of the year and sold through licensed professionals. No word yet on pricing. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. The one screen we can see with TransCat, I can't make it out very well, but you've got an eagle eye on it, right? Yeah, it looks good so far. I mean, things are moving. Well, let's find out from our expert, and that would be Stephen Cavazos. Hey, now, who doesn't love that for a Friday? Looking at good starts to the roadways right now. Loop 410 at Broadway does show just a few people out there. We're seeing a little bit more activity out there, US 90 right now, but the day's just getting started, and we're, uh, we're keeping a close eye on things right now. Uh, but taking a look right now at our maps, it's looking really good right now. If you're going to be heading out the door there in the next few moments, a lot of green on your screen. We haven't spotted any issues to be on the lookout for. Just a few construction sites that have since wrapped up, but something to be on the lookout for as we told that will be taking place in Bernie over the weekend. But if one of the places you're going to head to is the gas station, well, we have your gas prices here. According to AAA right now, the average gas price in Bear County is 268 and around the state. We're looking at 283 in the country. AAA does report that average gas price is 317, which is actually down a penny from last week when we saw it at 318. But the national average was about 319. So that's some good news. Those gas prices are slowly declining. But uh, if you want to save some fuel, we know it's been a busy month at the pump, especially 
especially with Labor Day weekend coming up. We know that fuel saving tips can help out a lot. Uh, just be sure uh, now Texas does or AAA I should say does suggest that you accelerate smoothly with light to moderate throttle there on the roadways and avoid extended idling to warm up the engine. Again, a lot of folks tend to do that during the winter time, but AAA does say that is unnecessary and wastes a ton of fuel there. Uh, be sure to slow down and drive the speed limit, of course, and when approaching those stop signs or red lights, it's best to take your foot off the brake and slow down naturally there. But one last look here at Transit. Hopefully that will save you some money at the gas station if you plan on heading out there later this morning, but things are looking good so far. Good news for Friday morning. Built up the other day, 21 gallons. I think it was just this just shy of 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty pricey. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> so, I want to know how big, obviously the picture's giant size, but how big that thing was. It's hard to tell there, wow. isn't it? That's a very good picture. <laughs> yeah, nothing to compare it to, but <laughs> remember the, no, you probably don't remember, Land of the Giants. I remember that TV show. It was way, I, probably before you were born. Way back when, anybody remember it? I don't. That's my I age. I don't remember. I, it just reminded me of that. So okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, so. Pretty though. Yeah. yeah it's gorgeous. Really Great green, color. Green, green color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful color of green. As far as grasshoppers go. All right. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning, and yeah, it's very warm, very humid yesterday. Second day in a row, we got up to 98 degrees, some triple digits uh, from Catula, Laredo, all the way up to uh, Del Rio, and we're going to be doing the same thing again today, and really. You know, we, we do have a lot of humidity right now, and we'll keep some in the afternoon. Metropolitan area, mid upper 90s around here. And so we are going to be seeing those heat index readings well up into the uh, low hundreds, not really up to heat advisory criteria, but just hot enough where you got it, got to take it easy. And one thing, even though yeah, the dry air heats up a lot more easily than moist air does, we're losing a lot of the ground moisture. And so that's not adding to the humidity factor. And so that's what's uh, one of the reasons why it's plus the fact that it's just darn hot out there and the upper level winds are changing. But that's one of the reasons adding to the fact that we are getting hotter than where we have been most of the uh, the summer, or at least most of the past couple of weeks. So today uh, it can't rule out a stray sea breeze shower or two. Uh, really wouldn't count on it. And computer models aren't picking up too much tomorrow about the same situation. There may be one or two of those sea breeze showers, even a thunderstorm primarily well down to the south and to the southeast. Again, don't get really excited for these. If you happen to get a shower, that's just going to be fantastic. But then going into Sunday and even the first part of next week, nothing. Of course, Grace tropical storm right now It's probably going to be a hurricane right as it makes landfall sometime later on today, becoming a hurricane again, very uh, low category one storm. But that has been pushed down to the south of us. And the reason for it is this area of high pressure. And again, this is the thing that has not been really in command and in control for most of the summer. It's usually just plunked down right on top of us. You get the same thing each and every day and no chances of rain. But that has not been the case. So this thing is almost going to parallel grace and so it's going to keep it pushed down there to the south of us and though as it moves on in here it's kind of a give and take situation grace stays down to the south but that thing moves in that's going to continue to heat us up and continue to be on the hot side all the way in the upper 90s through the weekend into the first part of next week as that thing just really gains strength sitting on top and that's going to suppress any sort of rain however by the middle of the week it does tend to kind of ease a little bit, maybe up to the north, just enough that we get the flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. A couple of little disturbances around here, and there is the chance for a few showers by maybe Wednesday, Thursday of next week. But of course, it's still a week off, kind of wishful thinking at this point right now. Uh, 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature. Yeah, going to be another sizzler. 98, mostly sunny skies. Heat index well up into the hundreds today. Definitely lots and lots of water. And same thing this weekend. If you're doing anything outside, uh, like I'm thinking what comes to mind, cutting the grass. <laughs> going to do that as early as possible without waking up my neighbors tomorrow. And uh, plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. And again, those heat index readings will stay up in the low hundreds. So how early is too early to mow in your mind? Nine. Nine. Not 9 a.m. You think that's that? the perfect time you think to start? Well, I mean, as far as neighbors, you know, you yeah. don't want to. Well, I mean, maybe they'll be up doing yard work as well. Could be, <laughs> or they will be after. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> going to be the one. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Thank you, Briggs and Stratton and did Osterhage. I, yeah. <laughs> did I wake you? No, the lawnmower already did. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 523, about 79 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, we're checking out the latest trailer for Marvel's Eternals, plus the MTV VMAs get ready to honor the Foo Fighters. Movie and music news to kick off your weekend. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the deviants. The new trailer for Marvel's Eternals gives us our first look at the latest threat to humanity. Deviants, monstrous creatures long thought to be gone forever. The MCU's latest super-powered team does battle with the Beasties when the film hits theaters November 5th. Foo Fighters have won 12 Grammys and other awards, but their next honor will be a first. MTV has announced the Rockers will receive the first ever U.S. Global Icon Award at this year's Video Music Awards. The 2021 VMAs are September 12th in New York. I always describe my parents as Juliet and Juliet. People were just beginning to wrap their minds around same-sex partners. Let alone gay parents. Here's your first look at Nuclear Family, about one couple's fight to have and keep their children in the 1980s. The three-part documentary series debuts on HBO September 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 528, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the CDC says the rate of people under 50 being hospitalized for COVID just hit its highest level yet. We'll tell you the reason behind the spike. Plus, we'll hear firsthand from rescuers who had to convince a man to take a leap of faith to save his life from a fire. A small and local university say they are in a unique and strong position to hold in-person instruction for their students. Details on their safety protocols as we navigate through this pandemic coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 79 degrees. Hey, we can handle this heat. I know we can power through. We've had a good summer so far. We're experts at heat, right? Yeah. For Friday, August 20th, good morning to you. Happy Friday. Yeah, we could just be prepared for it and it will be okay, right, Mike? I love the eternal optimism from Stephanie Serna. Yes, uh, it, it's very hot though, and I don't think we're you know really used to it, like we've been saying after this coolish, if you will, summer. But the past couple of days have been up to 98 degrees, and don't see any reason why we're not going to be up there again today. 80 right now, 75 is the dew point, almost identical numbers to yesterday and the past couple of days at this time of the morning. Mold is high, pigweed is low, and we are going to be seeing well, first of all, very warm and humid this morning, of course, and then mostly sunny. Very hot, 98 heated. The normal high average is 96 right now. So yeah, that's been the rarity as well, at least the past couple of months, is having high temperatures be on the above normal side. Plus, we got to factor in some of that humidity, even though it will drop a little bit this afternoon. We're still going to have those heat index readings well up into the low hundreds. Weekend, sunny and hot as well. And next week, we are going to be starting off on the hot side. And then hopefully, we get a chance of rain midweek, not only for the rain benefit, but also to kind of take the edge off some of these temperatures. Take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. All right, 530, still easy going on the roads? Uh, you, mainly. I think that's it's safe to say that it's pretty uh, good out in a lot of locations, but right now US 90 at 36 looking a little busy right now. We want to give you a closer look here from this shot at trans guide. We can see some flashing lights off in the corner. This just popped up in our system, so we're going to go ahead and check with our friends at trans guide in a few moments, find out which direction this is actually happening in and if this is going to be impacting that early morning drive, but uh, the weekend is off to a good start. I'd say, you know, taking a look here at the maps, uh, just a few uh, yellow spots indicating some minor congestion there. Uh, particularly off here towards uh, the Loop 410 area. But right now, things have been predominantly off to a good start as we're getting the weekend going here. Inbound times have been looking really good right now as well. As you can see, pretty green if you're going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area. In the next few moments, coming in from Seguin, 29 minutes right now on I-10, 22 minutes from 87 and Lavernia, and we're looking at 28 minutes coming in from Floresville right now. So right now, yes, things are off to a really good start, especially as we're inching closer to that rush hour traffic. But Right now, things are getting very busy off US 90 at 36. We'll find out what's going on and bring you those updates coming up. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. 
A small San Antonio University welcoming first year students from 40 states and around the globe this morning. And school officials at Trinity University say they have been monitoring the pandemic closely for the past 20 months. They say the school has about a 90% vaccination rate on campus. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, how is the university planning to move forward with in classroom instruction? Well, Stephanie, Trinity is a rather small campus. School officials tell us they have the ability to fully test all members of their campus community and say that they also will be conducting full baseline testing of everyone on campus as they return to work and to the classroom. They tell us they are doing this to get a better sense of the presence of the virus on school grounds as they welcome people from all over the world. The school's vice president for strategic communications and marketing says this information will be helpful in mitigating the spread of COVID-19 on campus. Assuming that we're successful in doing that through our contact tracing and our quarantine and isolation process, uh, through behavioral changes like mask wearing and distancing, um, we believe that we should be able to continue um, with those those in-person activities. But we're going to evaluate and we'll make changes as the conditions require them. Andrew says they've set a cap on in-person gatherings of no more than 50 people. She says a cap that will have no effect in, in classrooms. Since Trinity classes are already small, the use of a face mask while indoors will be required for both vaccinated and unvaccinated persons. Now we're told students will not have to show proof of their actual vaccination card or vaccination status to access their classes and or activities, but they will be employing a daily symptoms checker where students, staff and faculty will have to run through a series of COVID-19 related questions. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Top health officials say more people are finally getting vaccinated against COVID. More than 1 million doses were administered yesterday, which hasn't happened since July. But more people are also ending up in the hospital. And as seen as Britt Conway reports, the patients are getting younger. We're seeing far more young people affected by this virus requiring hospitalization. In fact, hospitalization rates for people under 50 are setting new records. The biggest jump? people 30 to 39 and kids under 18. The CDC says they're up more than 30% higher than their previous peak in early January. The virus is drawing a distinction between those who have been vaccinated and who are unvaccinated. But only about half the population is fully vaccinated and there's still no approved vaccine for kids under 12. COVID-19 vaccine reviews are the top priority uh, for the FDA. It is possible that we may have vaccines for under 12s before the end of the calendar year. But this school year has already started for many, putting kids squarely in the middle of the mask debate. In Louisiana, a mask protest at a school board meeting. In Georgia, some parents are pulling their kids out of school. In Texas and Florida, pushback against governors blocking mask mandates. In California, a parent attacked a teacher during an apparent argument about masks. And now President Biden has directed his education secretary to step in. This includes using all of his oversight authorities and legal action, if appropriate, against governors who are trying to block and intimidate local school officials and educators. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The Biden administration has sanctioned more Cuban officials. It says are partly responsible for the suppression of anti-government protests across the island. The new round of sanctions, the fourth since rare protests broke out last month with Cubans taking to the streets to protest their lack of freedoms and a worsening economy. According to the Treasury Department, the actions would freeze the assets of those who U.S. officials think are involved in human rights violations and block Americans from doing business with them. The White House has said Cuban people should know the U.S. is working to defend them. The U.S. Department of Education is canceling student loan debt for borrowers with severe disabilities. It says it's waiving $5.8 billion total for more than 300,000 people. To qualify, borrowers must have a total and permanent disability. The Social Security Administration will automatically identify eligible recipients. Right now, it is 538. We're still hovering around 80 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about a new product from Febreze that is meant to keep your pillows and linen smelling fresher for longer. 
outside with live cam. We'll check back in with Stephen coming up. See how the morning commute's going. Quite a few more cars there on 410 over by the airport. You're watching GMSA on a Friday morning. And welcome back. It's about 541 in your morning consumer headlines. Don't expect vehicle prices to come down anytime soon. An announcement from the world's largest automaker indicates supply is struggling to catch up with demand. Toyota is suspending production at more than a dozen plants because it can't get enough parts to build its vehicles. Toyota says COVID-19 is disrupting the supply chain, so it can't get enough computer chips and other parts. The second largest automaker, Volkswagen, says it might have to make similar production cuts soon. Febreze is introducing a new scratch and sniff technology to make their famous products fresh scent last longer. As part of the launch, the company is introducing a line of pillows that use the technology. The new Unstoppable Touch Fabric Spray releases a fresh scent with every touch of soft surfaces like rugs, furniture, and pillows. The breakthrough is what's being called Touch Activated Scent Technology. It comes at a time when Americans are not cleaning quite like they used to. Procter & Gamble is hoping the new product will help Americans, quote, smell like they have it together, end quote. Chipotle is testing its first new protein made from alternative ingredients in seven years. The restaurant chain is first trying out a plant-based chorizo in Denver and Indianapolis. It's made with pea protein and different seasoning like ancho chili and smoked paprika. The product is vegan and has 20 grams of protein per serving. No word on when Chipotle will add its plant-based version of chorizo to menus nationwide. It's getting more and more popular. Yeah. Those meat alternatives. It's interesting. <laughs> 542 on your Friday morning. Up next, uh, we're going to hear from the rescuers who helped save a man who had to jump to safety from a fire. A man's recovering after being trapped on a burning boom lift in Alabama. Firefighters were waiting below to catch him and had to coax a man to jump. CNN's Ginny Mose has the story of a man faced with terrifying options. It was a pick-your-poison moment for a painter trapped on a flaming boom lift, fire or electrocution or jump. 23-year-old Cabrera Ramirez was up on the platform when the lift collided with power lines and caught fire. You could tell he was panicked. Because the lift was energized by the power lines, firemen couldn't use water or their aerial ladders. Ramirez was doing a paint job at a Harley Davidson dealership in Oxford, Alabama. Oxford Fire Department's battalion chief, Curtis Cop, modestly acknowledged. Yes, ma'am. It was his idea to grab a tent they found lying around the dealership to use as a safety net for Ramirez to aim for. What were they yelling? Jump. <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> Start yelling jump. I think he knew what he had to do. At first, he didn't want to do it. About 15 firefighters held the tent taut as the situation worsened. No! 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 The explosion and a huge cloud of smoke apparently finally motivated Ramirez to jump. No! 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 The tent held. When he did hit, he did not make contact with the ground until everyone holding it set it on the ground. Ramirez injured his knee and suffered from smoke inhalation. We were unable to reach Ramirez, but... Apparently he was back at work the next day. From what they said, though, he stayed on the ground that day. If this ever happens to you, the battalion chief recommends a cannonball position rather than a straight up and down jump. But whatever position, better to take the leap before the flames leaped at him. Genimos, CNN. New York. So that was a camping tent they using to catch him with, basically. Yes. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, quick thinking. I mean, a really yeah. tricky situation yeah. with, uh, you know, with the, 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 the power, mm -hmm. the electricity That's involved. Ve very scary. Whew, okay. Glad he's okay for the most part. 547, let's check on traffic. Stephen, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, taking a look at TransGuide, we told you about a situation happening here off US 90 at 36, where we saw some flashing lights a little bit earlier. Now, friends over there at TransGuide did get us a different view. As you can see, though, uh, looking quite clear out there, there were some uh, police lights out there. Uh, it does appear that they were moving something off of the roadway, but that has since cleared out, although traffic is building up there in those westbound lanes of US 90 out toward Castroville. So uh, just use caution and possibly be prepared for any slowdowns. And something you're also are going to want to be prepared for are 
some lane closures taking place this weekend. Uh, this will be some setting up some barriers and uh, striping work that's going to be taking place out toward, out toward I-35 in Comal County. It's going to lead to a double main lane closure from FM 306 to Conrad's Lane. Uh, that will be taking place later today, actually later in the evening from 9, in the e 9 at night to 8 in the morning. Uh, should be wrapping up by Saturday. That's tomorrow. So something to be on the lookout for there. Uh, something else we've been talking about is this demolition of the US 87 bridge out towards Kendall County. Now this is part of the Kendall County I-10 extension project for that TxDOT has been working on. Uh, there's been multiple delays for the last few months here, but it should be taking place this weekend. It is going to lead to a full closure of those main lanes out there in the both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. Again, keep in mind this is starting today, tonight actually, from 8 in the evening. Should be wrapping up by Monday, August 23rd. So for our friends out in Kendall County, be on the lookout for those construction crews out there. Could lead to some closures. We're going to have more on that coming up at 6 on GMSA, but for right now, I think the roads are looking a lot better than they were yesterday. So some good news right there, guys. Good news for Friday. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. Still, still thinking about that guy jumping. Oh, yeah. No. Well, I mean, so scary. You know, looking at it in the video, mm -hmm. it didn't look that high. But when you're up there, oh, yes. I mean, it might as well be a mile down. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he broke he broke his knee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about, you know, being on the high dive at the pool, you know, from well. the ground looking up. Hey, it's not too far. And then you go, whoa. Yes, it's far. <laughs> We're about to play a game with this KSAT Connect picture, Mike. Yes, find the frog. <laughs> Oh, find the frog. I didn't even know there was a frog. Oh, oh now yep, I see it. Yep, yeah. right there. I that is, see it. he's being bashful, isn't he? You don't see it? <laughs> I don't see it, Mike. He's right. Yeah, he's, right there. there you go. You see him on the yep. little, uh, kind yeah. of on the branch. Oh, part. okay. I'm, I'm just going to say yes, but he's he's really well hidden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. The green kind of matches the leaves, and the rest of him kind of blends in with the, the bark on the. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a leaf. Steven. Yeah, right there. Um, the, uh, okay, okay, okay. But he's slightly and lighter. His, and than there's his, his eyeballs right there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Clever frog. But it's one of the, I mean, if it didn't say find the frog, you'd look at that and go, oh, yeah, and then look at pretty green leaves and ignore it. So very cool picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And clouds starting off this morning, of course, identical to the past couple of mornings. And this is what it's going to be like as we go in toward the weekend. Of course, it has been a coolish summer, especially, you know, what we always think of it as the hottest months of summer, July and August. And these are the average temperatures temperatures high and low and of course July we had what five days that were either average or slightly above that and then it has been averaging a bit warmer but it's been the low temperatures up until yesterday and the day before that have been on the higher side that have taken that average up to or up to above normal readings and then we of course we got into yesterday now the case being uh, when you look back at July and August we've only had four days where the high temperature has been at or above average. July 3rd got 95 degrees, that was average, and then of course it was hot on the 1st of August, and then we had yesterday and the day before that up to 98 degrees. So yeah, the high temperatures have been really held in check, but now it looks like it is time to uh, time to pay for that coolish past couple of months or at least month and a half with these temperatures that are going to continue to be on the hot side. A lot of humidity out there this morning and we've got the flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. We will see somewhat of a drop in temperatures, dew point temperatures later on today, but with those, you know, you get those readings, the monitor readings up in the upper 90s, it doesn't take much humidity to put that heat index up into the low hundreds, and that's where it's going to be. So we'll go through that same cycle then going into tomorrow as well. A lot of humidity in the morning, slightly lower in the afternoon, but still heat index readings are going to be up into the low hundreds. Today we make it to 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. We'll have some of these low leftover morning clouds and then 98 high temperature heat index up into the hundreds, mostly sunny and other than a stray sea breeze shower, you know, one or two of them out there, just a mention of it. Rain is not in the forecast for the next few days. Uh, once we get into Wednesday, Thursday, we'll see some subtle changes to give us, a, at least right now, the chance for a few showers around the area Wednesday and Thursday. At least they'll take the edge off the heat, too. That would be Thanks good. Yeah. yeah, hopefully they, they stick around Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Fingers getting crossed. time to take, so. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You, Mike. 552, about 79 degrees. And are you ready for some video game football? This year's season of Madden NFL kicks off today. We're going to get a special look at the new game next. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, more on the situation in Afghanistan as families are desperate to leave. Even some Americans struggling to get through Taliban-run checkpoints being turned away. 
This as the Taliban cracks down on protests. We are live on the ground with the very latest. That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. One final try now for Brady. Looking downfield for Godwin. They'll go for it. It's Mahomes. It's nearly football season, but for gamers, it's already Madden NFL 22 season. Dude, this is what it should look like. This is what pregame for a football game looks like. Twitch streamer SFAND TV got his hands on the game early. Like, this is the show, dude. I got early access to the PS5 version, which uh, has a lot of the, the next gen stats and some of the new features that didn't make it on the PC version. Second down. Go Let's go, dude. I'm loving it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think one of the big criticisms of Madden over the years has been there's uh, not enough development from year to year. But I would say this year specifically is probably the, the most they've updated the game, specifically franchise mode, in probably over five years. There is a core fan base that likes franchise mode. And uh, they really wanted to turn it around and put like some role playing elements into the game, some RPG type elements. They added talent trees, kind of similar to World of Warcraft for the coaches. So coaches get experience, players get experience as the, uh, as the season goes on and uh, their careers go on, they get better stats and all that stuff. Are you kidding me? Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. We have a lot more heading your way in the next hour, including an overnight standoff. What we're learning about the big scene as the investigation continues to unfold this morning. At Transguide right now, if your travels take you on I-35 at Vaughn Army right now, we've got uh, a few flashing lights out there on the right side of that uh, screen there, almost top dead center of the screen. Check back in with Stephen Cavazzo, see what's happening on the highways and byways of the Alamo City after this. It's moving day for first year students here at Trinity University. What changes they'll be expecting coming up next. This morning, the White House facing increasing criticism for the situation in Afghanistan. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. Coming up, we'll hear from one American family still stuck in Kabul. And taking a look outside with live cam this Friday morning. It's a humid start to your day, but hey, it's Friday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, August 20th. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, make time to treat yourself for some coffee this morning or maybe a donut uh, and things will heat up later on. So maybe popsicles later <laughs> in the afternoon. You get a popsicle and you get a popsicle. <laughs> it's going to be another very steamy weekend. Mike Osridge is here with more on our Friday and our weekend. You just read my mind. I was thinking ahead too. So and you know, um, we've had some folks on SA Live before and they sneak in like uh, uh -huh. fruit and veggie in freezing and popsicles. Go here, have a popsicle, have a popsicle. And and I feel uh, better about it then. Yeah, yeah. and the kids, you know, get all the, the moisture they need and all the vitamins and they Very cool smart. them. So and I just gave out the secret because the kids are watching right now. So <laughs> no, those are real popsicles, kids. Yes. Yes, they're not healthy for you. Anyway, uh, lots of clouds hanging around this morning. Yeah, um, lots and lots of water, no joking aside, and just a Lots of shade to keep as cool as possible. 79 right now, Stinson 80, 79 Kelly and Randolph at 78 degrees. But you have to add about um, two, three, four degrees to these numbers. That's what it feels like because of the humidity, which is still out there. Mold is on the high side, a little bit of pigweed. And uh, throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures will pretty much stay steady from where they are right now. We will have a breeze later on, but boy, like yesterday, I mean, it's just that hot wind blowing in your face. We'll be up to 90 today at noon. A couple of those leftover morning clouds and then a high temperature today. We'll make it up to 98, just like the past two days we've hit 98. And those are the hottest days so far this year, officially out there at the airport. And this trend is just going to continue. Not only today, I just don't see any reason why we won't hit 98 degrees the next couple of days. As far as any rain chances, slim to none. We'll talk about that and maybe something more encouraging next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's up? Hey, got some flashing lights here, Mike. Right at 35 northbound at Von Army. Pretty dark out there. Uh, you can see those lights blinking out in the abyss of the roadway there, but we got a few cars out here this morning as we're getting Friday started. Uh, just tough to make out exactly what kind of vehicle we're looking at there from that shot at Transguide, but uh, either way, when you see those flashing lights, as we always like to remind you, move over and slow down because that driver could be receiving assistance 
distance anytime soon, and especially in dark areas like here off 35 northbound where there's not very many lights. Just use some caution driving through that area. Taking you here to our maps that again was reported there off I-35 northbound at Von Ormy, but overall the morning has been shaping up with very little issues, just some construction we've been talking about here and there that should be taking place throughout the weekend, and of course we'll have more on that later on GMSA, uh, but right now the inbound times look fairly good as well. Pleasant drive coming in from Pleasanton 37 with 28 minutes right now, and if you are going to be traveling up from Lytle on 35 where that stalled vehicle is reported, it's just 16 minutes. Just be on the lookout for that stalled vehicle. 90 from Castroville, we got 19 minutes to the downtown area, but so far so good. Keeping our eye on this uh, 35 at Von Ormy where this stalled vehicle is taking place or happening, I should say, and we have more on that construction taking place out in Kendall County. Again, that's coming up later this morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you very much, Stephen. Right now we do want to get to late breaking news. A northwest side apartment complex has become a crime scene. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting in the 7800 block of Callahan near I-10. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what do you know so far? Well, we have very few details right now. I was able to confirm that it's a man who was shot. It happened inside an apartment uh, right back here. These are the Cordoba, Cordoba apartment homes here in the 7800 block of Callahan. Now, just about where you see that police car, it's down that breezeway where they have been working, talking to other people in the area. Uh, the man was rushed to a hospital. We did see the ambulance leave from here. Police tell me that he is alive, but they did not have an exact condition. He was shot in his upper body. Uh, we have seen Eagle flying over. We know that they were looking for someone earlier, but no updates yet as to whether they found the person who they think is responsible for this shooting. We're going to work to try to get some more details for you and bring them to you in the next half hour. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. And right now we're waiting for San Antonio police to send us more information about a late night standoff on the southwest side of town. Details are limited, but we can tell you it started a little after 1030 on Old Sky Harbor Drive. That's near Old Pearsall Road and Loop 410. We can tell you officers were responding to a standoff and SWAT police fire and EMS were all at the scene. Investigators tell us they will be releasing more details later this morning. We will bring them to you as they become available. New this morning, a big decision regarding mask mandates at Northeast ISD. The district held an emergency board meeting last night to discuss that issue. After hours of contentious discussion in a Facebook post, NEISD said, quote, in the interest of student health and safety, the NEISD Board of Trustees has voted to implement a temporary face mask mandate for all students, staff, and visitors. The mandate goes into effect Monday, August 23rd, and applies to all NEISD campuses, buses, and facilities while indoors. During the meeting, the district's assistant director of health services said the Delta variant is likely spread to spread to up to nine people when one person is infected. She added that elementary classrooms are seeing the majority of these cases. And there's updated guidance from the Texas Education Agency. The TA is now dropping enforcement of the governor's order that made masks optional due to ongoing legal challenges. Along with allowing mask mandates, the agency says schools must notify all teachers, staff, and families of all students who are in the classroom or extracurricular activities involving that COVID-positive student. School districts still must report cases of COVID-19 to health officials. And this morning, students from all over are moving into their dorms at Trinity University. And even though faculty and staff will not be able to help, the move-in process is still happening. Jonathan Cotto is there live. Jonathan, what are some of the changes uh, resident staff and faculty are having to make? Excellent question. Well, as we know, the pandemic ran everyone out of the classroom and into virtual learning environments. But school officials here at Trinity University tell us they won't be starting remote like other surrounding universities and say they're planning on moving forward with their big move-in day that will be taking place later this morning. Trinity University's President Danny Anderson says they've listened to their campus community and their desire to keep this school year as normal as possible and have set up safety protocols and guidelines to do so. He adds the essence of the Trinity experience remains intact. Anderson says after a year of remote learning, he's happy to welcome the class of 2025 on campus today. The incredible change of plans that all of the team is able to 
um, develop and execute so quickly just helps us move seamlessly. We maintain ongoing communication with our families and our students. We're able to quickly reorganize the whole um, move-in process. Um, so we're really confident that we're going to be able to launch the semester in a way that will be truly memorable for all of our students. The faculty staff here at Trinity University say they are excited to have their students back in the classroom and in the dorms and say they are constantly working and creating ways for students to grow and develop an experience that would not be able to, they would be, wouldn't be able to achieve if students were not here on campus. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Our back to school coverage continues this morning on our website. We are keeping an eye on everything you and your kids need to know as they head back to class. You can just head to ksat.com slash back to school. The Bear County Sheriff's Office mourning the loss of one of their own this morning. Funeral arrangements are now being made for Deputy Floyd Cardenas. The 41 year old passed away in his sleep. Sheriff Javier Salazar said there were no health problems they're aware of and those noted that Cardenas was at work just a couple of days ago. He'd been with the department for 18 years serving on the SWAT team as well as a trainer for their canine unit. This morning, growing desperation in Kabul as thousands tried to navigate Taliban-controlled checkpoints to get to the airport. And there's growing scrutiny of the situation after news that U.S. diplomats at the embassy in Kabul reportedly warned the Secretary of State that the Afghan government was on the verge of collapse. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. This morning, the urgency to escape Kabul intensifying. 15,000 Americans and up to 60,000 Afghans who helped the U.S. now desperate to escape. The White House saying the U.S. evacuated 3,000 people yesterday, with many more cleared for departure. Images from outside the airport show a country in chaos. Reports of at least 12 people killed since Sunday. Taliban fighters struggled to keep control using guns and batons against civilians. I actually got whacked with... Um you know, with one of these like, you know, fan belts for not moving fast enough. David Fox is still struggling to make it back stateside with his Afghan wife and three year old son. Right now, they're camped among the crowd at the Kabul airport. For me as a as a father, I always have to risk, in, you know, I have to weigh the risks of these different options. So to me, the, the airport is very dangerous. The Pentagon says more than 5,200 U.S. troops are now there, attempting to process more people faster, and in Washington, more scrutiny of the Biden administration. Sources tell ABC News U.S. diplomats at the embassy in Kabul sent a classified memo in July to top State Department leadership, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken, warning that the Afghan government was at risk of collapse from a Taliban takeover. President Biden, who's remained steadfast in his decision to withdraw, now expected to speak on Afghanistan later today. Senators will get a briefing on Afghanistan this afternoon. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 611 and it's about 79 degrees out there. After the break, uh, my summer fishing series continues here on GMSA. We're talking about some unique lures that are designed and distributed right here in San Antonio. And taking a look outside with live cam. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. We're at 79 degrees. Not too bad. A little humid, though. We'll be right back. Welcome back to GMSA. Just about 615. The fishing industry is a $50 billion a year business. If you walk down the aisle of a place like Bass Pro Shops, you'll see hundreds of fishing lures for sale. What you may not know is that one unique brand is designed and distributed right here in San Antonio. Well, this summer, we got to tour Livingston Lures on San Antonio's north side. Now, while they don't have a storefront operation, we visited their warehouse and offices. They specialize in high-tech lures that cost about a dollar more than average with a built-in circuit board and mini speaker. It's the only lure in the world that mimics the bait fish. You know, companies have been using fishing lures for over 50 years with a rattle where the only company has the actual biological sound of a bait fish. So that's what sets us apart. So you heard that right. All their lures emit electronic sounds designed to lure prey. Now I haven't tried them yet, but Livingston have a staff of pro anglers that have won big money and big trophies using those lures. Coming up later today on GMSA at 9, you'll hear about the inspiration for the technology they use and how the company has even gotten involved with the reality show deadliest catch for real. That's today at nine.
A mini speaker? Mini speaker. All that built into those lures. Wow, that's hard to And they're imagine. from basically right here in San Antonio yeah. now. Very cool. We I, I didn't know it until I started asking <laughs> really? around. Really? Yeah. yeah, I've never heard of that. They are based here. Very cool. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos this Friday morning. So far, things have been looking good. For these shots at Transguide, we know we do happen to jump back to these shots at Transguide if I can. Yeah, 37 at Hackberry off to a really good start here. Uh, getting a little bit busier now that the morning is getting going here. You can see just a few more folks out there. We did have a stalled vehicle there at 35 at Von Ormy, northbound of 35. Uh, that has since cleared out, as you just saw from that shot at Transguide. So things are shaping up to be pretty nice. However, construction that's going to be causing some a lot of lane closures is taking place right over here at Kendall County. It's a demolition of the US 87 bridge. Let's go ahead and jump to some video out over there. It's a heavily traveled route. Now this is all part of the I 10 extension project and after so many delays that demolition of the US 87 bridge will be taking place this weekend and that work will require the closure of the I 10 main lanes in both directions from State Highway 46 to scenic loop road and that closure will be happening later tonight from at 9 p.m. actually from 5 in the morning to and we'll be wrapping up Monday. Monday morning, but keep in mind there's going to be several detours there uh, according to the text website and we do have that information posted on our website already at ksat.com. But keep in mind uh, there was tons of delays for this project, a lot of it due to the weather and also some migratory birds that had nested under that bridge. But again, that will be taking place this week in the demo of the 87 bridge out in Bernie. This is again part of the I 10 Kendall extension project that text has been planning. So it's something to be on the lookout for. But uh, based off these shots at Transcat looks pretty sunny out there from this video, but what can people expect weather-wise this weekend, Mike? Lots of sunny and hot <laughs> conditions, and those folks working outside are going to be Boy, hoping, hoping for a lot of shade out there. Uh, you know, and it's interesting. I remember a couple of months ago, they're doing some of that construction out there, and you'd think on a weekend traffic wouldn't be that heavy, but boy, it gets backed up quickly. Yeah, whenever you have all that construction, 78 degrees uh, this morning, temperatures about uh, three, four degrees above normal. Of course, add to that with the heat index and then 98. Once again, we've hit it the past two days officially here in town. Of course, the two uh, hottest days of the year thus far and nice looking picture. I just like that little smattering of some uh, wispy clouds. One of those pictures where if you I like that, if you can only paint this scene, if you looked at those clouds long enough, I'm sure you can come up with a whole bunch of images. Just use your imagination. Anyway, thank you very much for the KZAC Connect shot. We have lots of clouds starting off this morning, of course. And as we were talking about mid and upper 70s, even some low 80s right now. These are the actual air temperatures. 81 at Castorville is the warm spot. And of course, these numbers are sky high with all that humidity around here. Mid and upper 70s, definitely kind of steam bath sort of weather when you step outside this morning. And so yes, uh, heat index 86 tints and 87 in Castorville right now and 83 up the road at Canyon Lake over the past 12 hours. Nothing showed up on radar. Just a little bit of a kind of some clutter pops up there. But other than that, yeah, we had lots of sunshine in the afternoon and then the morning clouds worked their way back on in here. Pretty good uh, storm system up here to the north of us, but that's going to be staying up there to the north. And for us, we've just dominated by now the weather feature that has not been very uh, prominent this summer, which is high pressure. And so what that's doing is putting a lid on really any sort of rain development. There may be a couple of sea breeze showers. Again, this is that kind of broad brush computer model. So, you know, one or two of them out there are possible, but not very likely. And even going into the uh, rest of or the first part of next week, nothing really shows up on radar. But by the middle of the week, we'll see a subtle change in the upper level steering winds, and that will give us at least a slight chance for some rain. So the high pressure again, which has not been very dominant so far this year, this summer, I should say, moves on in here. That's what's keeping grace at bay down to the south of us. But as that continues to slide in, it's just going to sit on top of us and keep us very hot. But it will sort of ease up to the north of us ever so slightly by the middle of next week, and that's what's going to allow, at least right now, a small chance for some rain. 90, partly cloudy skies today at noon, and then high temperature, we make it up to 98. Yeah, another just sizzler. Boy, it's tough walking across the, the grocery store parking lot on a day like this. Uh, breezy today, but it's just that hot wind blowing in your face. Sea breeze showers, yeah, they're possible, and uh, I just don't see any reason why we won't be in the upper 90s. I'll put it that way through the weekend. First part of next week, very, very hot temperatures. And then uh, just keep hold out some hope for a couple of showers middle of next week. All we could do is hope at this point. Yeah, lots of shade, sunscreen, water.
Uh, in the meantime, I'll be waking up early on the weekend to avoid the heat. To get your, your daily jogging. Correct? Yes, yes, and whatever I need to do outside <laughs> at yeah, that point. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 621, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the ETSA Roadrunners are getting ready for the football season, and they're looking pretty good. We're going to have more in your morning sports brief. Time for your morning sports brief and big game coverage. We're talking high school football coming off a sub 500 season. The Holmes Huskies looking to make a move, but that's not going to be easy in District 29 6A. Holmes went 1 and 8 last season, 1 and 7 in district, but they have nine starters coming back, four on offense, five on D. They have a lot of experience as a number of players have been on varsity since their sophomore season. Holmes will open the season against Lee Saturday, August 28th, 7 p.m. at Coma Lander Stadium. We are just 15 days away from UTSA season opener at Illinois, September 4th. Led by head coach Jeff Trailer, the Roadrunners have one of the most experienced rosters in college football. He says this is a bowl caliber team with multiple leaders who bring it every day. Being able to have multiple leaders is, you know, definitely a great thing. And I feel like, you know, guys like our super seniors and all of our older guys, um, you know, on both sides of the ball have been doing a great job of that. And, you know, and I feel like, you know, it would definitely take us far this season. By the way, UTSA Athletic Director Dr. Lisa Campos picked up a four year contract extension that runs through November of 2026. Finally, Missions Baseball didn't start off so well last night against the Hooks. During the first inning, the Missions allowed the Hooks to score four runs, but they came back and took the lead late in the ninth. San Antonio wins it. Final score of eight to five. The series continues tonight down in Corpus Christi. Good job, guys. Yeah, good job and good luck tonight. Time now is 625 and about 79 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an overnight shooting just north of downtown. We'll have the very latest. The search is on for a person with a gun who shot a man at this northwest side apartment complex. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the latest on that story. Outside right now, the sun is trying to come up. It's rather sticky out there, lots of humidity. Those clouds kind of hanging in there right now over there on San Antonio's north and northeast side. We'll check in with Mike in a moment. Good morning to you. It's Friday, August 20th. Happy Friday. We are excited about Friday here on GMSA, but are we excited about those warm temperatures this yeah. weekend? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a sizzler, isn't it, Mike? Yep, we've had the hottest two days of uh, the season so far, officially out there at the airport, and this is going to be the hottest weekend that we've seen around here with temperatures. We've had a, a couple of 98s, and uh, I don't see any reason why we're not going to be getting up there again today through the weekend, even going into the first part of next week. A few holes in the clouds right now, but uh, like the past few days when we've seen a little bit of clearing in the morning, then it kind of clouds over and and then we'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. 79 right now. Dew point is at 75, which means you step outside and it is like a, a wet towel almost when you walk out there and it's going to fog up your glasses. Feels like 86 at Stinson, 87 Castroville, mid 80s in parts of the hill country. And these are the, the heat index readings and uh, 83 at Canyon Lake molds on the high side. A little bit of pigweed is showing up. And we yeah, have very warm and humid. It stays pretty humid today. All the, it will drop down somewhat, but still enough humidity. And when you have temperatures this hot, it doesn't take much to put those heat index readings well up into the, the low hundreds. And we'll do the same thing over the weekend. Sunny, hot, a lot more humidity in the morning. Heat index up in the uh, low hundreds by the afternoon. And that's how we're going to start off next week. But then hopefully some rain's going to be working its way in here. The next couple of days, a sea breeze shower too. Doubtful, but next week, a little bit of encouragement for some rain and taking the edge off temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, hadn't been really too much going on up to this point. Yeah, right? I like that. Yeah, I think as we get inching closer to that weekend, uh, we like to see the roadways looking pretty healthy and good, and that has been the case from these shots at Trans Guy 35 at New Brussels. A few more folks getting their morning started early with us here now that it's picking up on this Friday morning, but uh, taking a look around, things have been pretty quiet so far. Spotted a few stalls that have since 
has been resolved. Uh, people receiving some assistance. Just be on the lookout if uh, you see any of those stalled vehicles out there. Uh, but let's go ahead and take you to the map right now. Things have been looking pretty green on the screen and thankfully uh, no issues when you see any traffic delays right now, although it's getting a little bit busier. The roads have been smooth so far, and if one of the places you got to head to first is the gas station, we have your gas prices one last time here from Bear County. Our AAA is reporting that the average gas price is 268, and around the state we're looking at 283, and a country 317. And again, that is one penny down versus last week, where we saw the uh, average gas price nationally was around 318. Uh, but they said a uh, text dot AAA that is, pardon me, did say that the average gas price nationally was at 319, and it was the highest that we had been seeing all year long. But right now we're seeing it at 317. So some good declines there, I think. But if you are going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area from any of these neighboring communities, things are looking good as well. Coming in from I-10 and Bernie, 24 minutes, 26 minutes coming in from 281 and Bulverde, and seeing the same for 35 in New Braunfels, 26 minutes there as well. Roads looking good so far, getting pretty busy there off I-35 southbound at Maine, but we're watching things closely. More construction to be on the lookout for as we get ready for the weekend, Mark and Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Gunfire inside a northwest side apartment has sent a man to the hospital. Also, has San Antonio police searching that neighborhood for the shooter. Katrina Weber is live where all of this is happening in the 7800 block of Callahan Road. And Katrina, is there any update on the status of the man who was shot? Well, the only word we have from police is that he was alive. He was he was alive. He was shot in his belly and taken to a hospital. We saw the ambulance as it left here with lights and sirens going. The police are still here. They're working uh, in this breezeway here at this apartment building here. These are the Cordoba apartment homes here in the 7800 block of Callahan. Let me also give you a look at the video from a little bit earlier. The shooting happened about an hour ago or so, a little bit after five o'clock when police got called here. We do know that it's a man who was shot again in his belly, rushed to a hospital, and police have been looking for the shooter. We saw the helicopter overhead a little bit earlier this morning, and police had set up a quadrant where they sort of blocked off this whole area uh, as they were searching for that suspect. Some of that has peeled back a bit now, but again, police still keeping watch over the apartment where it appears this happened. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, questions remain following an early morning shooting just north of downtown. Happened around 4.30 this morning at a corner store at Blanco and Mariposa Drive. And that's where San Antonio police say two men were pushing a broken down vehicle into the parking lot of that corner store. Those two men apparently started arguing when police say one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other before taking off. A man in his 30s was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Police say he was not being very cooperative. New this morning, a big decision regarding mask mandates at Northeast ISD. The district held an emergency school board meeting last night to discuss the issue. After hours of discussion in a Facebook post, NEISD officials said, quote, in the interest of student health and safety, the NEISD Board of Trustees has voted to implement a temporary face mask mandate for all students, staff, and visitors. The mandate goes into effect Monday, August 23rd, and applies at all NEISD campuses, school bus and facilities while indoors. During the meetings, the district's assistant director of health services said the Delta variant is likely to spread to five to nine others when one person is infected. She added that elementary classrooms are seeing the majority of the cases. More people are getting vaccinated against COVID. That's the good news. The bad? Hospitalizations are still on the rise. In fact, hospitalization rates for people under the age of 50 are setting new records now. The biggest jump is people 30 to 39 and kids under 18. The CDC says those rates are up more than 30 percent than the previous peak in early January, but only about half the population is fully vaccinated and there's still no approved for vaccine for kids under the age of 12. COVID-19 vaccine reviews are the top priority uh, for the FDA. It is possible that we may have vaccines for under 12s before the end of the calendar year. With school year having already started for many students, President Biden has asked the education secretary to use uh, their authority or even legal action against governors standing in the way of school officials. Texas Supreme Court has declined to block restraining orders against Governor Greg Abbott's mass mandate. 
Justices are remanded Attorney General Ken Paxton's appeal to the third Texas Court of Appeals in Austin for a hearing. The court did not issue an opinion for its decision yesterday. Move comes the same day as the Texas Education Agency dropped for now enforcement in the state's public school system of Abbott's mass mandate ban. In a public health guidance letter, the TEA said enforcement was being dropped because of the ongoing challenges to the ban in court. The U.S. Department of Education is canceling student loan debt for borrowers with severe disabilities. It says it's waiving $5.8 billion total for more than 300,000 people. To qualify, borrowers must have a total and permanent disability. The Social Security Administration will automatically identify eligible recipients. All morning long, we've been telling you about students moving in today over at Trinity University. And of course, things are going to look a little different this year. Jonathan Cotto is out there live. And Jonathan, how are things looking out there right now? Well, Stephanie, Mark, things are looking wonderful, and I'm not alone. I'm here with Trinity University's mascot, the Tiger, and excited to start the day with first-year freshman students here at Trinity University. Let's walk over to meet our friends here, Elijah and Lavolia. Elijah, it's your first-year student here at Trinity University in the middle of a public health crisis. How are you feeling? Um, honestly, I am so just blessed to be able to have this opportunity to be on campus, and I feel like Trinity has taken all the steps in order to make coming back to campus so realistic and so safe in between, you know, mandating a uh, mask in all public spaces and having the COVID test and really just ensuring that we're being safe on campus. Thank you, Elijah Lavolia. I know other students in surrounding universities don't have the, the, the opportunity to move into their dorm or even have in-classroom instruction. How do you feel about being able to be inside in, in your dorm? Honestly, it feels amazing just meeting my roommate and other like teenagers that are going into their young adulthood life. I, I feel very sorry for the other college students who can't, and I'm sorry about that. It's, but it's a, honestly, it's great to be here physically. It feels like more of the college experience, which I wanted from the beginning. Now, I understand the, the university is going to be employing a daily phone-based uh, symptoms checker um, that you're going to have to go through a series of COVID-19 related questions. How do you feel about these measures? Um, honestly, I think it is for the best of everyone, and it's honestly super convenient. Um, Trinity has developed a technology in where you can go online via QR code and just fill out uh, by your student ID in order to make sure that you're feeling well and ready for the day. Um, and once you're cleared, you get a little green card that you're able to show um, in dining halls or in all of your classes. And so it really is just something that is amazing to have. Well, thank you so much, Elijah and Lavolia. Thank you so much for waking up early and being with us this morning. Mark, Stephanie, we're going to be hanging around here on campus. In just a short few hours, we're going to be welcoming parents and more students into their dorms, and we're going to be here for it. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto. Back to you, Mark Stephanie. Jonathan, thank you very much, and good luck this semester to everybody out there at Trinity. Our back-to-school coverage continues Monday right here on GMSA as our biggest district, Northside ISD, and 11 other districts are heading back to class. We'll be covering the big day live with team coverage. You can also find more on our website. Head to ksat.com slash back-to-school. Today, President Biden will update the nation again on the situation in Afghanistan. Overnight, nearly 3,000 people were evacuated from Ahmed Karzai International Airport. Tens of thousands are still waiting to be airlifted from the country. There are also new questions about communication in the weeks before the Taliban takeover. Sources tell ABC News that U.S. diplomats in Kabul sent a classified memo to State Department leadership in mid-July. That memo warned the Afghan government could collapse as the Taliban swept across the country. Hundreds of firefighters are working to contain a major fire in Greece. This morning, more than 400 firefighters with four water dropping planes were fighting the blaze that broke out Monday near Athens. Greece's wildfires come after the country's worst heat wave in about three decades. And California's wildfires still making headlines. More land has burned this year than at this time last year, which is actually when a record was set for most acres burned. The Dixie Fire is now the second largest in state history. Back here at home on your Friday morning, we're at 640, about 79 degrees. A recent report links human activity to climate change, and according to that report, the worst could be yet to come. We have the details just ahead on GMSA. Hurricanes like Harvey or worse, severe flooding, drought. It's what the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, says we can expect in the next 30 years 
because of a direct correlation from human global warming that has resulted in climate change. So what does this mean for us in Texas? People that live there, San Antonio, they're going to see warmer temperatures, more heat waves, and uh, much more water stress. So less water available. When it does rain, it may rain harder, but you'll get fewer of those events. Dr. Andrew Dessler, professor in atmospheric sciences at Texas A&M, says these severe weather events will continue in Texas if nothing is done immediately to slow global warming. Dr. Jenny Catania from the University of Texas Geological Sciences is concerned about Texas's giant coastline and the sea level rising. Once you raise that base level, I'll raise up my hand. Once you raise base level a little bit, then um, those storms can come even further in and they can have a much bigger impact. So if you think about all the infrastructure that we have our, at our coastline, the idea of moving that becomes really costly. Both Dessler and Catania say there are solutions and hope if acted on soon. The solution is we have to stop burning stuff we dig out of the ground. You know, stop burning coal, oil and natural gas. We know how to do that. Dessler says he knows this is easier said than done because of the investment in infrastructure in the oil field in Texas. He argues we have the technologies for cleaner energy like solar, thermal, nuclear and windmills. But it's a matter of our policymakers making that switch. Catania says there are economic solutions. I've actually done an analysis that I published on, um, you know, how much the cost would be if we pay up front for mitigation versus if we wait and defer that cost for later. And it's vastly orders of magnitude cheaper to deal with the, the cost of climate change now ahead of the catastrophes. Catania estimates that switching to a green economy would cost about two trillion dollars versus paying an estimated four hundred and fifty billion dollars every year by the year twenty ninety. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Sarah, and happy Friday to everybody at home that's getting their morning started with us here. That's taking a look at TransGuide and US 90 at Nogalitos has a few more folks out on the roadways right now. Things have been shaping up to be pretty nice from the shots that we've been spotting right now at TransGuide and uh, no issues to report here in the Alamo City. But as we mentioned, some construction to be on the lookout for is going to be taking place out in Bernie. Taking a look right now at some video that we have. Uh, this is part of the demolition of the US 87 bridge out there. Again, this is in Bernie. It's part of the I-10 Kendall extension project and it's going to actually require that the closure of the I-10 main lanes in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. Now, that closure will be from Friday starting today from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Should be wrapping up, though, by Monday morning. Uh, keep in mind, there's going to be several detours out there throughout the weekend, and you can always head over to our website at ksat.com to learn more about those detours. And this was actually a project, Mike, that was delayed several times because they had migratory birds that went there, the rain. Uh, so it did cause some delays right now, but those birds have since flown off and I think the weather may be a good time to do this. Right? Yeah, actually it's going to be really hot for those yeah. folks working yeah. outside this weekend. But uh, yeah, just it, lots of water, lots of shade. Beautiful view of the moon. It is the waxing gibbous right now. Full next week, technically, because Sunday next week. And that's when it's going to be full on the uh, the 22nd. Absolutely gorgeous out there. Should be good uh, moon viewing weather because we get all the, the clear skies in the afternoon. That continues on in the night. We don't really see the, the clouds come back in here until overnight. So right now, a smattering of clouds and a few breaks, obviously and nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite radar picture except for some of those those low clouds. And yeah, there's plenty of cloudiness off to the west of us, but you can almost make out a bit of a clockwise rotation. There is an area of high pressure which is trying to, to sit in on top of us, and that's starting to put a lid on the atmosphere. It's still somewhat of a flow coming in here off the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, you can't completely rule out a sea breeze shower or two maybe even tomorrow afternoon, but they're going to be just few and far between a couple of clouds around here. But really, I don't see any reason why we're not still going to be well up into the the upper 90s like we have been the past couple of days. Tropical Storm Grace, of course, lost a little bit of strength as it moved across the Yucatan. 70 mile per hour winds at the latest update, but it's going to continue that westward movement, probably become a Category one hurricane again, just as it makes landfall, and it's going to be sometime late uh, tonight or early, early tomorrow morning. Of course, it's staying well to the south of us, and the reason for that is that high, which is sort of paralleling it and setting up a kind of a, a block, if you will. So it's not allowing that storm to come in anywhere toward us, but then. 
On the flip side of that, though, with that high moving back in, that's what's helping to heat things up, suppressing any sort of showers around here. And that's the case through Sunday into the first part of next week. That will strengthen. And yeah, it's just going to keep us hot. Now, by the middle of next week, it will weaken ever so slightly and kind of scooch up there to the north. And that's going to allow bit more of a flow coming in here off the Gulf. And so there is the, the hope that that will then allow a couple little waves and maybe even a few showers and some extra clouds, slightly lower temperatures by the middle of next week. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperature gets up to 98 again and heat index into the low hundreds over the next couple of days. Other than a sea breeze shower, you know, here or there, uh, I think we're still going to be just staying in the on the above normal side in the upper 90s. Of course, in your backyard, especially off to the west and southwest, may touch triple digits. And then we hope for a couple of showers by the middle of next week. Of course, heat index is going to be into the hundreds all weekend long. And that's in the shade. In the sun, you know, you're getting cooked by the sun, basically. So Just count on it. Yeah, stay in the shade, lots of water. Good advice. I will really be looking for the shade this weekend. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 650, about 79 degrees. And our South Texas A Crime Story series continues with a 67-year-old woman who police say hired a carnival worker to kill her son and daughter-in-law. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam on a Friday morning. Let's check on that sunrise in progress. We have more to come here on GMSA, but first... I want to wish my little brother a happy birthday. This is Art. He's turning 46 this week, and we love you very much. Have a great weekend. Happy birthday. Good morning, everybody. Taking a look at our roads one last time. Uh, getting a little bit busier out there. Loop 410 at Gulebita, 281 at Hildebrand shows. We're off to a pretty good start right now. As you can see that the morning is getting going here. Just keep in mind right now, although things are looking good, we do have that construction taking place out towards Bernie for the I-10 Kendall expansion project. It's going to be leading to some big closures. Of course, stay with us at KSAT.com for all the latest on that. But right now, these inbound times are looking pretty good. If you plan on traveling to the downtown San Antonio area, green on the screen, which is what we like to see, Mike. Yes, and, you know, the grass has been so green most of the summer with all the rain that we've had, but, you know, it's been on the dry side. So and as far as rain, not anything maybe until next week. More on that in a second. First of all, uh, 83 is what it feels like right now. 86 at Stinson. We have temperatures in the upper 70s, so we're still about uh, four or five degrees above normal. Then you factor in the humidity and humidity is going to be sticking around throughout a good chunk of the day. We will be up to 90 today at noon. Mostly sunny skies, 98 for a high temperature with southeasterly wind. Nice little breeze, but it's just that kind of hot wind blowing in your face and of course, the heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds. Now, a sea breeze shower or two is going to be possible over the next couple of days, but I really wouldn't count on it. And this will be day number three in a row up to 98 degrees. And of course, we've been saying all morning long is kind of ironic because on Tuesday was the start of the decline in average high temperatures. Historically, 96 is the average high temperature right now, but I really don't see much of any reason why we are still going to be. We're not going to be in the upper 90s the next couple of days. You know, again, a sea breeze shower or two, and of course, the heat index is going to be staying very, very high. And then by the middle of next week, a uh, slight little pattern change, and that's going to give us at least a couple of more clouds and a chance at a few showers. And of course, what's keeping us hot is also keeping what is now a tropical storm, but maybe become Hurricane uh, Grace again, well down to the south of us. So that's not going to have any impact on our weather. All right, Andy. team, plans for the weekend? Cut the grass early tomorrow morning. Steven? Just just the pool. Just yes, the in the pool. pool. In the pool. <laughs> Sunscreen, right? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Always, always. Even when you walk <laughs> to your car. Even on the stage, remember. <laughs> yes, I learned from Mike Osrage. So yes, you have to. That's yes, with the plan. I, I hope to run early, and my uh, my husband has a. Uh, Irish football game again tomorrow, but at 10 a.m. Woo! Gonna hide in a dark room. Everybody have a great weekend. <laughs> have a good weekend. We'll see you back here at 9.